talked after Tennessee about how you guys would have a second chance at them. How much does it mean to you guys, and how excited are you guys to just see them again? Uh, I think we're all excited. I mean, I've, I've you know been here so time. I've never beat Tennessee. Uh, obviously, it's an in-state rivalry. Yeah, it means a lot, especially you know they're one of the top like top teams in the conference. So you know we need uh, Coach Dak has to talk about we need a signature win, and you know this is one I feel like you know we match up well and we can go get. So I think we're looking forward for an opportunity. You know, last game or last time we played them, we were up at half and we, we kind of came out a little flat and uh, didn't execute the way we needed to. Um, I, I think we're excited to get a second chance at that, and you know prove that we can, we can play a full 40 minutes. How can you build off the momentum again from the Ole Miss game into this game? Um, I, I think, you know, with the Ole Miss game, it was kind of a bounce back game from Alabama. So I, I think, you know, there's still a level of execution we can, you know, build on. Um, you know, defensively, we didn't grade super well, but uh, there was a lot of effort. I think, you know, we combine that effort with doing more of the right things consistently, you'll, you'll see a, you know, good result against Tennessee. What do you think is the biggest challenge that Tennessee presents? Uh, the physicality, uh, you know, they're they're an old team, they're a well-coached team, so they're going to be physical. They're going to take advantage of us. Um, you know, if we relax, they're going to try and take advantage, and so we can never relax. We have to be locked in at all times, and if you know we keep great focus, um, it'll be a really competitive game. It should be fun. This game different for you guys just being on campus, Tennessee and State rival, all that. Uh, yeah, obviously, you know, our student section, you know, they've been awesome this whole year. They've always provided us a great boost, so you know. We won't win this one for them, for our program, for everything like that. It's obviously personal, as I stated a little bit before this, but I mean, just having our student section, you know, ha having the home crowd behind us, you know, it's a huge momentum switch, uh, swift from Rocky Top. Clean, what's the last week been like around the program? Go going back to the Alabama game, the days leading into the, to the Ole Miss game, that win. How would you describe the last week? Um, I, I think internally there's a lot of positivity. You know, we talk about you know blocking out outside noise, and you know you you, you know you go on social media, you see some negativity and stuff like that. I, I think you know the best way you can do it, or at least how I've looked at it, is you know you flip it. Like you know there's negativity because they want to see us do well, right? People want to see us succeed, and you know we and when people want to see you succeed, it's not because you know they don't think you can. It's because they see the potential there. So I mean. We're kind of focused on showing that potential that, you know, Coach Stackhouse and the whole coach staff has coached us really well. We're, we're a talented team, and I think we, you know, we're excited to prove this last stretch that we can put it together and we can show that we're one of the best teams in the SEC. Do you feel like that performance Saturday kind of hammered that point home? Uh, I, th I think it was a good step in the right direction. Obviously, you know, it's one win. You know, you have to stack a lot. You know, we're still below 500, but I think, you know, there's, was it eight games left? I, I think, you know, you're going to see us really compete, fight, and, we're going to hammer that point home at the end of the season and go on a run. How are you feeling health-wise? I guess you, you got back a little earlier than what was first feared, right? Yeah, uh, we have an amazing uh, strength and conditioning coach and training staff, and they you know, they kept me in the best shape they could, or in great shape, so I was able to bounce back. Um, our athletic staff, they never put me in a – or athletic training staff, they never put me in a bad position, but, you know, they, they got me on a good rehab plan. I started feeling really good and, you know, kind of accelerated timeline, right, you know. Shout out to our doctors and everyone who helped me get back, and just I feel great. Well, I think for us it's just um, obviously we had to get that, that taste out of our mouth. It was probably the worst game that any of us have ever been a part of. Um, it's from a, a total points loss. I mean, we just didn't didn't have it. I mean, I, th I think it's from the standpoint that we were uh, the tough part about it was that I think we had a great game plan and just uh, just kind of spiraled out of control early on for us, and none of us really knew how to to, to stop the bleeding. Um, but we, we got back to, to uh, a couple of days of really good practice, really good focus, and, and I thought our guys were, were, were unbelievable. Showed a lot of character um, to be able to come back the way they did and win that game against uh, a really clean game against Mississippi. I mean, Ole Miss, I mean, I thought they, uh, they didn't turn the ball over a lot. We didn't turn the ball over a lot. It was a, a really good game, and, and our guys competed and made plays at the end. So it just really speaks to, to their character and who they, were, and who they are because it, it wasn't easy to do. Um, and so I, I, and so I'm, I'm really proud of them from that standpoint. Now we're now we're here uh, playing against a, a rival who we haven't beaten in my tenure and haven't beaten in a long time. So it's uh, it's good good timing to uh, to get back to, to to being at home. I thought we played them really well at their place. Um, they got a little separation from us there in the second half, kind of some of our own undoing. I thought we missed some opportunities to to make the game a little easier for us. But um, you know, being in, in the confines of home and um, should have a bunch of energy in here for us uh, tomorrow night. I'm, I'm excited about, uh, you know, 
this game, and, and, and but it's going to be a tough game. I mean, I, I think coaches, Coach, Coach Barnes is one of the guys that I really, really respect in, 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 in the game of in the, in the game of basketball, not just the college game. I think he does it the right way. His guys play extremely hard, and I think that's that's why they're tough to beat because you got to find a way to to compete for for 40 minutes, uh, and I think that. If you don't find a way to compete for 40 minutes, they're going to find a way to beat you. So I'm, I'm, I'm looking for our guys responding to that challenge of, of doing what we need to do for 40 minutes and, and try to get probably our, our biggest win um, since I've been here. Jim said he kind of takes this game personal. Do you see a little extra fire with the team because of the in-state rivalry? Well, I mean, I think, I think for him, you know, he knows that this is – probably his last opportunity to beat him other than maybe you know getting him in a, in a tournament or something like that so um, I, I just think we we've, we've gotten to the point I mean we, we've gotten better at the process of learning how to win uh, and the, the development that, that that takes and, um, and here we are I mean these next six seven games for us are a big test for us big test to see where we've come uh, with our program I think you know we we've, we've done it the right way we've done it with great guys we've done it with you know, Vanderbilt men, guys that can come here and be successful in the classroom, but can also compete at a high level on the court. And, you know, we, we haven't compromised that, you know, and I think we've, we've done it with the, with the right guys. I mean, I see guys complaining about, you know, NIL numbers from, from, from other, other schools and, you know, and, and we, we just haven't gotten to that point, you know, and, and I think that we will. I mean, it's, it's the new world that we live in, but we did it with guys that just want to be here and want to, you know, want this experience of getting a first-class education and, and playing at the highest level. And, um, and I'm, I'm proud of that fact, and, and, and we need a signature win like this to, um, to make it all right. And so I, I think not only this game, but there's some more games on our schedule down, down the stretch that um, could really uh, signal that, that, that we're doing it the right way and that we're on the right track. No, I don't think so. I think old-fashioned values still, still have a place, and and, and, and they, they want it and they need it. But it's just, um, it's, it's how can you you do it uh, constructively? And I think that's. I mean, it's different with every, you know, with every athlete. Everybody's different. Everybody's not able to, to handle the same thing. So you got to really know your, um, know your guys. Know. Uh, what bus buttons need to be pushed with them, and and, and 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 it's not just one of us that understands that. It's I mean our whole staff. I mean the, their, in, you know, interactions with our guys on a day-to-day -day basis, whether it's classes, whether it's you know meals, all those different things play into uh, us understanding who they are and, and and how we need to to motivate them and, and help get them better and, and push them to their limits and push them to their potential. I mean that's what we're here for. We're you know, we, we have the coaches, but we're teachers. You know, we're, we're, we're professors here, and, and, and I think we do a good job. And uh, like I said, and I think our process of, of learning how to win, our guys have, have grown in that capacity. And, and we found out a lot about our, our personnel as well. We, I mean, we figure out, you know, who's gotten better um, and who, you know, which um, groups of guys and which individuals give us the best chance to, to win and, and you don't just arrive there you know because you put a, a roster on a piece of paper but you have to um, develop that and understand it and I, and I think we're at a good place now in knowing how we need to win where the ball needs to go the things that we need to do to uh, to give ourselves the best chance to do that. Is there a better understanding between you and Tyron after the last few days? No I mean I think uh, no, no, we had a strong relationship before that, you know, again, just like Tyron lost his dad. A lot of the reason that he came to Vanderbilt because he, you know, I, I promised him that I would be a father figure to him, you know, and, and to his mom. So it wasn't it's knowing about just what you see a game, you know, it's, it's a lot more than just a damn game. That, that, that we're in the business of affecting these guys' lives in a lot of other ways. I'm going to be at Tyron Lawrence's wedding. You know, I was when he had his first child, we were the ones that was, was encouraging him and letting him know that, you know, we still had his back, that, you know, that Adele would change some diapers for him if we needed to. So, I mean, I think that's that's what we're 
uh, about, and uh, he had to learn a tough lesson just from the standpoint that I wanted to, to, to know that, you know, we demand more from him. I mean, I think he has the potential and the talent to to play beyond this, but he's never going to get there if he coasts his way into it and he eases his way into it. And um, maybe it seemed like a, the untimely situation with it being us playing a, a top game, but it was the time that was deemed for where he was and what he needed. And, um, and, and I'll continue to do that with other guys throughout our roster. I've done that with other guys throughout our roster. Um, even though I, you know, I critique them and I coach them hard, at the same time I tell them I love them. You know what I'm saying? It's not just fluff. I mean, I, you know, if it came down to it and, and I had to go and do something to protect Tyron Lawrence and his family, that's what I would do. And, and I think he knows that and he understands that. And it's just um, sometimes you got to communicate that. And I, can, I could probably be better at communicating that as well with not just him but um, other guys on it. But it's only, few, you know, only enough hours in the day that we get to spend with him and, 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 and to pour into him. But, um, you know, he's, he's going to be good, man. I think he's going to be good the rest of this year. He understands what we need from him, um, how when he's playing at a high level, uh, the difference that it makes in our team, you know, not just on the offensive end, but, but defensively as well. And I think Jordan, you know, he, he has to, you know, realize that as well. I mean, these guys' windows are, are, are getting smaller now. So it's, it's time, for, time for us to make that move and, and, and win these type of games and, and go on a, a nice little stretch the way I feel that we're capable of. There was a lot of teams that's been in our position, you know, set last year that made the tournament. You know, I think St. St. Peter's come to mind. I think they were probably 11 and 12, probably right around this time um, last year, and, and they found a way to make the tournament. And, and I'm hoping that we have some of that same type of magic ourselves and be able to push ourselves over the uh, over the threshold of of getting into the postseason again. Is that the Jordan? message? Is that the message that you tell the team with just six or seven games left in the SEC that you really have something a chance here? Oh yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think we've we we're always talking about work the game. I thought we worked our schedule. I mean, like I said, you know, mm -hmm. we talk about what we haven't done, but nobody talks about what we have done. We went out and played probably the toughest schedule to kind of, you know, if it comes down to to the margins that you know we we played the second toughest schedule in the SEC. We played a top ten schedule nationally, and we didn't shy away from that. And we had opportunities to win a lot of those games. Yeah, it's easy to point to the Alabama game where nothing went well for us, but there was a lot of other games that was that's been in the balance that um, I feel that you know still was kind of self-inflicted that, that we should have won and, and probably could put ourselves in uh, a better position than we are now. But we needed those games. It was a part of our process of uh, of learning how to win, and, and we and we're still doing that. We're still still figuring out things, not just our players. But coaches, things that we need to focus on and, and little things that I can do to try to help them understand the importance of each possession. And, and, and it's really breaking it down to those more um, finite components as opposed to just looking at, OK, let's just go win seven games. And it's not about just going win seven games. It's about taking care of each possession and focusing on the present moment and trying to do all I can not to let the team down in this one particular possession. And you stack those things and you build those things and ultimately you can you can you can get to that the goal of uh, winning games and getting to where you want to be. The, the score will take care of itself if you do those little things. Is Jordan going to be available tomorrow? Uh, as far as I know, um, he's still in the concussion protocol. He's supposed to get a light workout today, see how he responds from that. But um, I'm pretty sure that if he's any, any way possible that, that he can go, he, he will go. And, uh, but if not, then uh, we'll, we'll go with what we have. How about the relationship with these guys? Is that something you enjoyed about this job that maybe you wouldn't have if you were coming from all the other stuff that you to college? No, I'm a, I'm a people's person. I enjoyed the, the guys that I coached at the pro level, too. I mean, they're, they're all people. They're, they're not robots. They're not machines. And, and you have to um, – so it's more about relationships than anything else. We spend a lot of time together. Uh, you just see the games. You don't, you don't see all the things that go on with – them in practices, you don't see all the things that go on them with their their personal lives, the things that go on with them, you know, with their classes, the stresses of being uh, at Vanderbilt um, and, and and attending classes on a day to day basis, and you know we don't miss classes on game day. A lot of places that we go, they 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 they, they, they they're out even at home. We're not we're not out at home. They go to class t today. They go to class tomorrow. 
before their games. And, you know, we've, you know, we did some numbers on that. It's crazy the numbers. The kids pay a lot better when we don't have classes, you know, as opposed to when they have to go to class. I mean, the numbers, I mean, think Tyron shoots almost ridiculous. The player that he is when he doesn't have to focus on school as opposed to when he can just go to shoot around and, and come to a game. So those things are part of the challenge, part of the adversity that, 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 that is part of who we are, that we don't run from, that we embrace. But um, I think those are, uh, it builds our, builds who we are. We know who we are. And um, again, there's always going to be some external noise. Um, you know, it's, and, and that's just part of it. We know that, you know, newspapers and all things, they're, they're in a tough spot right now. And so, I mean, it's, it's, more, it's much better to sell those, those, those stories and having me, every picture that you put in the paper that I'm frowning. I don't frown all the time. I smile. I got a pretty smile. You know what I'm saying? So, so you, you can, that sensationalism that you try to use to sell, it's not who we are. It's not what we're about. These kids are happy. They understand. They learn the game of basketball. We've gotten better no matter what our record might show. The guys that have been in this program have gotten better and they'll tell you so. And I think they have told you so plenty of times. My staff works their ass off to help these guys get better. And, uh, and we're proud of where we are now. We're just at a pivotal point to where we really need to showcase it coming down, down the stretch. By the looks of it, Isaiah West seems to be kind of back to full health and he's really coming into himself. What have you seen from him recently? No, nah, he's good. He was at the game the other night. Um, he, look, he looks good. He's back healthy. Uh, I've been watching all of the highlights of it. And uh, just, again, t this talent level that we continue to bring in here. I mean, we, we haven't gotten it right. You know what I'm saying? You, you can't get it right. When you, um, where we were and in the position that we were in, you know, a guy got, got uh, 3.4 and, and can do anything. I got to take a hard look at him. But, uh, but I think, you know, and we, we, we made some guys, made some mistakes. Not, not necessarily with the people. We love some of the guys, but they just weren't this level. All right, I mean, and then that's the reality of it, and it's going to be the same again. I mean, some guys that had to come to this level and figure out that maybe I, if I go down the level, um, I can do better. And, and, and I think that we had to have those tough conversations. And this kid that I'm, I'm watching for afar right now, I love this kid. I mean, you got Gabe Dorsey, you know, what he's doing, not, not William Mary. I think he's one of the top three-point shooters in, in the country. It just didn't click for him here. Uh, but uh, and, and so it's about finding those right guys and um, – you know, and we'll continue to continue to do that. But, you know, Isaiah West, uh, Jaqueline uh, Roberts and uh, Carter Lang, those guys that we coming in here uh, next year, they're serious dudes, too. And I, and I think that that's that really bodes well for coming in here and having a seamless transition into what we do. Um, and, and um, you know, and like I said, we've gotten guys that hadn't been the case to where their immaturity and different things like that is something that we had to spend more time trying to improve as opposed to just their basketball games. And, but that's part of our charge, and, and we accept that wholeheartedly. But I, I just hope whether a guy stays in our program or he leaves, that he, leave, that, that he left better than what he came in. And, and, and I think that um, we do a good job at that. Isaiah seems like kind of a mix maybe of your current guards, maybe Paul Lewis, Noah Shelby. How would you kind of evaluate, maybe compare him to some of your other guards? I mean, he's really been, I mean, I think Isaiah has really been handling the ball really well. He's really been, uh, been distributing. I looked at him more probably as a two guard, more of a combo guard. But, uh, man, you know, he, I think when you watch him, he's, he's been the best player on the floor, and he doesn't have to do it by scoring. Um, it's just to his presence. Sometimes it's on the defensive end or if it's making plays for others. Um, he's, you know, he's shown the, the willingness. But like, like I said, but just talking to him, you know, he's, he's not a – you know, again, like I said, it, it, it's, it's just this new generation is just it's about me. Look at me. I mean, and, and, and I just have to accept it sometimes. They're going to do the three to head. They're going to do the two little. It's, it's just just part of it. Um, so but he's not one of those guys, you know, what I'm saying and some other guys that we're recruiting that have that same approach um, that uh, every time they do something, it's not about me. Coach Smith used to make us point at the other guy. Right, just to just to, to, to show everybody in the stands that it's not about me, but it's about the other guy that that made the play. Um, I might have to get back to that, but I think I think I think it would be good for the game. But but it's just we have to adjust with the times too. I mean, these, these kids are super smart. I mean, they're a lot smarter than I am, but I think I got them beat in two categories, and that's um, knowing basketball and, and knowing a little bit more about life. So uh, I'm going to continue to, to, to impart what I know in, in that aspect, but, um, you know, but continue to, 
to do what we need to do. And Isaiah and, and those guys are, are going to continue that tradition.